Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. M35 is the subject of today's video, a beautiful little open cluster uh, that's located in the constellation of Gemini. Now, the great thing about this cluster, it's easy to find and uh, also you can be, it can be seen uh, in any, any telescope really, any small telescope and even binoculars. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, M35 is a open cluster, what's called an open cluster. Now, the three, there are three types of uh, clusters. You've got uh, open clusters, globular clusters, and what's called stellar association clusters. Now, um, the open clusters are virtually what they say, really. I mean, the clue's in the name for all of them, apart from stellar associations. Um, but open clusters are just more loosely group of stars, uh, usually consisting of old and young stars. As where globular clusters, again, clues in the name, is more of a ball of stars, a more compact, dense ball of stars, uh, containing several hundreds of stars, usually old stars. Now, stellar associations, even though it has the most fanciest of names, is probably the most least interesting ones. Um, a stellar association is neither a um, neither an open cluster or a globular cluster. It's um, it's it's just a loose grouping of a very loose grouping of stars, uh, consisting of anything from ten to hundreds of stars. Now, out of the three types of uh, star clusters, globular clusters are probably my favourite, and a lot of other people's favorite but uh, there is also some very pretty open clusters to be found out there i mean the pleiades is a, is a classic example of a lovely open cluster and m35 is another one so without further ado here's just how we can find m35 now, if you're familiar with Gemini, the constellation Gemini, you've pretty much found uh, M35. Now, as you can see, this time of year in the normal northern hemisphere, it's in the eastern skies. Uh, quite high up, actually. In fact, as the year goes on, it's going to get higher and higher and higher. So there's plenty of time to see this one. Now, if you're not familiar with Gemini you may be more familiar with Orion. And as you can see, Orion is pretty much next door to Gemini and uh, and his uh, right arm virtually... Uh, sorry, his left arm, is that right? Left arm? Right arm? No, it's right arm. I was right the first time. <laughs> his right arm virtually points to Gemini. Another way of identifying Gemini is to take, if we just zoom in a little bit, there we go. Take a uh, an imaginary line through Rigel, and the very famous star Betelgeuse is one of many pronunciations of it. And then imaginary line straight through about the same distance again, and you're going to come to Gemini. Um, it's very distinctive with its two stars, Castor and Pollux. Uh, they're the brightest stars that represent the heads of the twins in this constellation. But it's not the heads, it's right at the other end that we want to concentrate of Gemini. In fact, it's uh, Castor's big toe area <laughs> we want to look at, so we'll just zoom in a bit. Now, the three stars to identify first in, in the Gemini are these three here, okay, uh, that go, go along the length of his foot. Now, once you've identified those three stars, you want these last two stars, okay, or identify these last two stars, which represent his entire foot, if you like. Now, if we keep zooming in a little bit, you'll see that M35 is right there and the way to that I always say that an easy way to find these uh, targets uh, for us non go to users if you're just uh, looking for these targets manually is do what I call the triangulation method and it's easy done with uh, with this particular um, star cluster so we take these bottom two stars here and as you can see it almost forms a almost equilateral triangle with uh, these two stars and M35. 
Now, if you can just imagine that triangular shape, it's slightly offset in the to the uh, to, to, to the right a little bit. But try and project that onto the night sky, and you're going to find that it's so much easier to um, identify these uh, quite sometimes hard to find targets. But you're not going to have much trouble with this one. Trust me, this one's a pretty bright, uh, lovely little open cluster. So try this triangulation method. Imagine this triangle and then project that on the night sky. So like I say, relatively easy to find this one. Um, uh, you will be able to see it in most sky conditions and with, uh, like I say, small telescopes and even binoculars. So have fun with the satellite passing by. <laughs> so have fun with this one, folks. Um, and uh, yeah, good luck with this one. Good luck finding this one. So there you go folks, another great target for you to hunt down on the next clear night and tick off as, yep, seen that one. <laughs> but don't forget, like I say, spend some time at the eyepiece when you do find these deep sky objects. Spend some time, and what I mean by that is get, get yourself nice and comfortable, get a chair if need be, and really look and appreciate what you're looking at. And uh, that is the true key to uh, enjoying the hobby to its absolute limit. Well, that's about it for another one, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and don't forget to hit that notifications bell because I do do regular uploads. In the meantime, folks, take very good care of yourselves, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.